Hey everybody, welcome here to Kujo Sound. In this series of videos, we will be making a spline system, which will move our audio emitter to follow the player alongside of a given path that we have given it. It will be great for rivers and other things, but to begin with, we're just going to be making it look like this. And we need to start from scratch simply by drawing the spline. So let's do that first. As you can see, I have spline points added to the scene like this and I have an actual spline that draws from each of these. What I want is I want an object to follow this spline. So to begin with, we need to be able to create the spline. That is actually quite easy. As always, this video is made by an audio designer who has really no programming skills. So have in mind that I'm trying to explain this as programmer free friendly as always. And remember that if you think this is difficult or anything like that, then just remember that I had a really hard time trying to figure out how to code this as well. And if you have any questions, fire away in the comments below. While you're at it, why don't you just subscribe? Okay, so I want an array of so-called spline points. I want to be able to add it to the scene and I want my script to automatically track which of these comes after another and then draw a line between the first object to the second object, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth. I'm going to do that by creating an array of vector three called spline points. A vector three is basically a coordinate, but there is some vector math in this. And if you like me, doesn't know jack squat about vector math, then all I know is that if you do certain things with these vectors, then you get certain results. I don't know how it does it and why it does it. I just know what to expect from it. So let's move on. Our private vector three array here that we will be calling spline point. We also need to know how many spline points are there. So we're gonna be making a private int called spline count. And for the sake of debugging this, of course, we are going to be making a public bool, which we will call debug draw spline, just for the sake of being able to see the spline if we want to, or also be able to deactivate it at some point. Anyway, we are simply going to, in our start function here, say that the spline count is equal to the transform of child count. That means that the spline count now becomes the value of how many children there are to this object, which means that when we can simply just add empty game objects to our current game object, and it will automatically know how many there are. So we want spline point, each of these arrays, we want that to become a vector three to the number of spline count. Hopefully you follow so far. Anyway, we're going to be defining how these work. So four, and if you, like me, you just type four and press tab twice, you get this. And then you just replace the name here with spline count. And this means that as long as the number that we identify as i, which is basically called index, that starts at zero. As long as its total number is below the maximum number of spline count, then you run this loop over and over again. So spline point i, which starts with zero, so that is the first spline point we have, equals the transform of the child zero and its position. It does so again with the next one and the next one and the next one. So in order to be able to see this, we are going to be drawing a line. Normally this drawing line thing between things is only done per frame, so we need it to be done in an update function. So void update. If our spline count is greater than one, then, we draw this line because if you only have one point, then of course it can't draw anything. So for again here, the value of i equals zero and i is greater than spline count, i plus plus. We debug dot draw line between spline point i and spline point i plus one. which means that it simply draws a line between the vector threes of the first object to the next object. And then of course it loops this, so it draws again from the value one to two, from two to three and so on. And let's make it green, that should be pretty. Okay, so we open our editor here, we create an object that we are going to be calling spline. Now it's really easy to get confused by these because you can't see these. So use the tag system up here. We're going to be creating this object, the spline that we will then give the tag a red one so that then you can see it. Actually, it doesn't matter where you place this specific object. It's more important that you place all the children of these, all the spline points at the correct location. So what we're gonna do is that we are going to place this spline with our spline script on it anywhere we want. 
and we're going to be creating children. It's just an empty game object, and we're going to be naming spline point. And we will give this a yellow tag. So if I put one here and here and press play, it will draw a line between the first object and the second object. So if I place more of these alongside this river here, this is, by the way, a free level that I downloaded from the asset store, and the controller is just a standard free third-person controller. It's not about game design or anything like that. We, we are not here to discuss that. We are simply here to create the spline first. So now we will be adding these. You can simply just press Control D to duplicate the spline point, and then move the spline point to here, to here, to here, and around so that it covers up the entire river. And when we press play, you will see that there is now a green line alongside this river. And that is how you create a spline. You have now drawn a line that goes from one object to the next, and then we can draw a line that follows anything we want. And we can use this system to have an object follow the line that we just drew between all these objects. And that is going to be the interesting part. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Subscribe to the channel if you really like this content, or even better, head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel. I would really appreciate it. See you in the next video about how to attach the audio emitter to these spline points. See you.